and you can see that there is indeed a design and it's actually inspired by Harry Potter. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Trevor with Maker Experiment, and today I'm going to be making a custom wallet. My friend Ethan over at Ethan Carter Designs actually sent me this piece of black leather. So I'm going to use it to make this project. And I wanted to do something custom that can be done with a laser as far as the design goes. But the wallet design itself can be made using traditional tools. And I'm gonna put a link in the description below where you can download the template that I'm using for free. It's one that I made myself that can work for either the laser or traditional tools. Because I'm gonna put this on the laser, the first thing I wanna do is put a masking tape cover on top of the leather for the cutting process so that it doesn't damage the surface too much. Then when I go to engrave, I'm actually gonna take that masking off just because there's so much detail to the design that I'm doing it's going to be difficult to weed everything out afterwards. So I have some masking tape here. You can use transfer tape or any masking tape should work just fine. But I'm gonna go ahead and cover a section of this for the cutting process. And then I'm gonna take it over to the laser, laser cut the actual pattern out. I'll show you what that looks like and then we'll go and engrave it. So let's go ahead and get started. So for this project, I've cut a piece of masking tape that's a little bit larger than what the wallet is going to need. I'm just gonna apply that directly to the leather on the face that I want to cut and just make sure that it's smoothed out and has no bubbles in between. And then we can go ahead and take this over to the laser and cut out the actual pattern. This part of the process can be done using just traditional tools. You do not need a laser for any of this. I am using a laser for this because I do not have pricking irons to punch the holes with a traditional tool set. Okay, so I've cut the piece of leather and I'm going to bring it up closer so you can see this. So I actually laser cut uh, the edges as well as where I'm going to stitch to. The reason for this is I don't actually own pricking irons, so I have to make do with what I can on the laser. So I'm going to go ahead and peel this off. So you can see it comes off nice and clean. The surface is nice and smooth, no charring or anything like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this piece back over to the laser. I'm going to etch the design into the surface and hopefully unmasking this will work to my advantage. Again, the reason I'm doing this is there's so much detail to the design that weeding everything out afterwards uh, may cause an issue. And I'm not really sure how it will handle the residue from the tape uh, going back and forth with leather. I just haven't done it enough. So I'm gonna go back over to the laser and try this out. For the engraving process, I'm using the 600 DPI setting with a speed of 70% and a power of 20%. This is on a 60 watt machine, so depending on your machine, your settings may need to vary slightly. The laser just finished engraving the design and you can see here that it's very subtle. So usually when I engrave leather or leather type products, I try to give it a lot of contrast just so it pops a little bit more. But this project, I wanted it to stay subtle, so it, it kind of looks like black on black. So I want to actually bring it up here. And you can see that there is indeed a design. And it's actually inspired by Harry Potter. So it's got Hogwarts Castle, the Snitch, and it's got the rocks and everything. So it is pretty detailed. So you can see why I didn't want to put masking on it when I did this. But if you pull it back, you can't really tell it's there. Up close, you can see it. And in the right light, you can see it really well. But I think this will work really nicely. So now that this is completely cut out, the engraving's done, all of the holes are made for the stitching. The first thing I'm going to do is try to thin out the leather in the middle. So normally you'd use like a sky bean knife for this. I don't have one of those. So I'm going to try to be very careful and use a a razor blade that I have. So hopefully that will work just fine. 
I'm also going to be using black thread for sewing all of this up. I'm going to be using Eco Weld to glue it together, Tokenol to finish the edges, and I'll have a burnisher as well when I get to that point, uh, and then just the needles to thread everything with. So as far as all of these items, uh, I'll put links in the description below, as well as a link to the video that was made by Little King Goods, who made a video of all the basically essential leather tools that you would need to get started if you wanna do leather work. So I'll link his video below because that's what I used to figure out what I needed to get started. So now that I have this done, I'm gonna go ahead and thin out the middle because this is going to fold in half. And then once I feel that it's thin enough in that spot, I'm going to go ahead and start sewing it together. So to thin out the middle, all I've done is fold this in half and kind of crease it down just so I know about where the middle is. And I don't have a skivy knife, so I'm just using a razor blade if you choose to do this, just be very careful. So here I'm just going to hold the leather down, make sure my fingers are out of the way of the blade, and then just make really small scraping strokes along the middle where that line is. So you can see the shavings start to build up a little bit. And if I scrape them down the length of the wallet, you can see that it does indeed work. It just takes a little bit of time. So now that I'm able to fold this the way I want, I'm going to go ahead, glue it together and start stitching it up. Now that I've thinned out the middle part of this wallet, I'm going to go ahead and glue it together. So because I've already cut the stitch marks into this and I'm not using pricking irons or anything like that, alignment is actually pretty crucial just to make sure that I can get the holes aligned and be able to stitch it together. So what I've done is I've grabbed two needles. I'm actually going to use them basically as guides. So I've got my Eco Weld here and I'm just gonna be using a generic paintbrush, a sponge brush, to brush it onto the leather. So I'm just gonna dip the brush in. It is small enough that it'll kind of fit in the top of this. I do need to tilt it a little bit just to get enough on here. But based on where my stitch lines are, so they're on this edge, or they start at this edge in this corner. So I'm just gonna put glue in that area all the way around. I don't wanna put glue uh, too far because I don't want it to stay in the bottom of the wallet. So what I'm gonna do is take a needle and stick it through the stitch mark at the bottom here. And then I'm gonna take another needle and stick it through the stitch mark in the other corner. Then as I start to fold this, I'm gonna fold first along this bottom edge. So I'm going to first try to feed the needle through the other hole on both sides. But once I have that, I'm going to go ahead and fold the bottom portion. I'm gonna try not to fold too much of the top right now or this other side. So I'm going to go ahead and push that down and just try to make sure it got another hole along the way, which it did. So that side's good. Now I'm gonna take the needle that was in this back corner and put it in the top most corner. And then once I have that aligned, I will push that side down. And again, I'm just gonna take the needle out, go about halfway and make sure it goes through another stitch mark, which it does. So I should be able to stitch this all up, no problem with the laser cut holes. Okay, so for the token all, I'm not gonna use a brush or anything. Uh, I'm actually just going to take my fingertip and get some on it. And then I'm going to Put it on the very edge of this all the way around. So then I'm just going to take this burnisher and find the groove that kind of fits the width of the leather the best. So basically I'm just moving it while rotating it in my hand and I'm gonna work my way all the way around the wallet. Now that I've got it glued up and finished on the edges and everything, I'm gonna go ahead and stitch it together. 
So I'm going to be using black thread. So to stitch this up, I do not have a stitching pony or anything like that. I actually use my woodworking tools to do this. So I use a parallel clamp and an F clamp because it's what I have on hand. I'm also going to be putting a piece of scrap leather on either side. So I just use the F clamp to clamp the parallel clamp face down to the table. So if I try to move this, the whole thing moves. But I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that. And I use leather on either side just so the face of the wallet does not get destroyed in any way. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut some thread. So for this, I'm gonna actually do about two arm lengths. So I'm just taking the thread across my wingspan and then I'm going to cut it. As far as starting this one off, I'm going to start on the hole closest to the angled face. And that's mainly just because I want the finishing stitch to be on the bottom of the wallet and not the side of the wallet. Here I'm just going through and hand stitching through each of the holes using a two needle stitching method. Overall, it took about 10 minutes to sew the entire wallet. I am by no means the fastest person at stitching a wallet together, but I have gotten better at it over time and with more practice. The one thing that does happen when using clamps for a stitching pony is sometimes the thread does get caught around the base of the clamp, which can cause issues at times. Now that I've gone through the last stitch going this way, I'm going to backtrack about three stitches, which is a trick I learned from one of Little King Good's videos. So I'm going to go ahead and backstitch three times. So this is, this is the way that I'm going to be ending my stitch. So I'm not tying it in a knot or anything like that. I'm going to be back stitching three times, cutting it, and then basically burning the thread at the end. And there's three. So to burn the thread, I'm actually using a thread zapper. So this was one of the tools that uh, he had recommended. So I watched a couple of videos of his uh, yesterday and pretty much all week to try and see what he was doing for this. And what he's doing is basically snipping the thread as close as he can get it on both sides. And then taking the thread zapper and basically just burning the edge until it's uh, gone. So I can already tell that this looks a lot cleaner than the last time I tried to do this. Because last time I tried to tie a knot and then burn off the thread. It's going to be hard to tell just because it's black thread on black leather. You can kind of see where I terminated the stitch. So I did terminate it down here, right actually at that hole. And then on the other side, where my fingertip is, is where I terminated this one. So on one side, I have the snitch design and the start of the castle. And then on the other side, I have the rest of the castle. So what I'm gonna do actually is I'm going to either give this one away or make another and give it away. So be sure to check out my Instagram at Maker Experiment where I'm going to have the details on this. It'll be done the same week of this video, but really I'm just going to buff this with a cloth, uh, just basically kind of rub all the debris off and everything else. I will put links in the description for all of the stuff that I used, as well as useful links that I found along the way. But I'm gonna put one more shot of the wallet up here, uh, both sides of it, so that you can see what the final product looked like in case you want to try making your own. I am going to put a link in the description where you can download this for free through my website. And it is going to be for personal use. So please don't try to sell it or anything else. I'm gonna give it away to all of you so that you can try to make your own. But if you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a like and comment down below which Harry Potter house you are. So I know that our family split up between Gryffindor and Ravenclaw, and we've been huge fans of Harry Potter pretty much ever since it came out. But be sure to leave a comment below as to which house you're in, 
as well as let me know what other type of projects you'd like to see, what other type of leather designs you may wanna see engraved onto wallets and other items. And be sure to check out my Instagram at Maker Experiment where I'll be hosting a giveaway for this wallet, as well as where I post pictures and progress shots along the way of what I'm working on. But I wanna thank you for joining me and I'll see you in the next video.